The New York Islanders' new arena deal was made official today, so I thought we should discuss whether or not John Tavares and Josh Bailey are both likely to re-sign with the Islanders long-term since their contracts are due this summer. And that's coming up next. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. On this channel, we review and analyze all 31 NHL teams with an unbiased opinion. So if you love hockey, hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss anything. On this channel yesterday, we had announced that the bid for the New York Islanders Belmont Park Arena was accepted. While everything was officially announced today, so the arena deal is definitely going ahead as planned. So as I mentioned in the video yesterday, I thought we should take a look at some of their key players. As in John Tavares, their franchise guy who's been with them a long time and is going to be needing a big raise and a new contract. Obviously his fellow line mate who's having a breakout season, Josh Bailey, is also going to be needing a new contract. I thought we should take a look and see how reasonable it might be that both of them re-sign with the Islanders long term. Alright, well first of all let's take a look at their current situation and compare what they're likely going to be making afterwards. So right now, John Tavares is only making $5.5 million, Josh Bailey is at $3.3. Obviously, they're both coming off long-term contracts. And the salary cap in the whole NHL world for contract and uh, what they would normally earn has changed quite a bit since those contracts were signed. So, obviously, those are two key guys. Now, they have some other free agents as well. There's uh, probably only two or three that I don't think they're going to be re-signing uh, due to either their combination of their age or their struggles or whatnot. Yaro Halak is a prime example. I, I don't see them re-signing him. He's making $4.5 million right now. And based on uh, his play and his age now, I'd be quite surprised if they, if they do re-sign him. I think they're more likely to go with Thomas Grice, and they'll find somebody else either internally or externally as a backup goalie for a much lower price tag. Because right now they have a lot of money invested in goaltenders. I think they can probably save some money there. Now they have a couple other key guys um, that are coming up as UFAs as well that are more likely not coming back. Uh, one of them being Nikolai Kuhleman, making a little over $4 million. Uh, he's not likely to return. Um, another one is Jason Chimera, who's now 38 years old. He's making, I believe, 2.2. So, you know, between those three contracts alone, you know, you're looking at over four for Kuhlman, over four for Halak, two for Chimera. You know, we're looking at uh, between 10 and 11 million dollars coming off the books. So that's going to help. Plus, the salary cap is going up a bit. You know, we don't know exactly where the cap's going to fall. Uh, we heard Gary Bettman earlier mention somewhere it's between 78 and 82. So even if it falls in the lower end, the players do have the, the right to increase that. They have, a, I believe it's a two or two and a half percent accelerator they can place on that. So we're probably gonna end up somewhere around 80 million. Now it could be more than that, but let's just go with that for argument's sake. So $80 million cap uh, compared to what they're spending now. So obviously Tavares at 5.5. Now, first of all, we should probably take a look at what he's likely gonna get on his next contract. If you take a look at other top guys that have recently signed, uh, let's take a look, for example, at Connor McDavid. Obviously, McDavid's making over $12 million. He's a lot younger than Tavares. Um, Tavares has been around a long time. He's also a former number one overall pick, been a very consistent player, a high-end guy, top guy for the Islanders. I think he could definitely command uh, a similar amount of the cap space uh, for his contract, and with the cap being up again, you know, it's hard to say exactly where he's going to um, fall, but I'm going to guess at least $12 million. I wouldn't be completely shocked if it was ended up to be more, just because of the cap going up, um, just because of the salary cap. Not necessarily, I'm not going to get into an argument point here whether or not he should make more than McDavid, because from year to year as the cap changes, it's not so much about one player is better than the other. You have to compare contracts that are signed at the same time. Now you look at Jack Eichel, for example, you know, making $10 million, you know, obviously he's going to be making more than that. So I think he's going to be in or around McDavid money. It could be more. It just really depends. But if we bank on him making $12 million, that's that's a good starting point. So that's more than double. He's at 5.5, so double would be $11 million. That's going to be more than double what he's making right now. So we're looking at, at probably around a $6.5 to $7 million increase right there. Now, Josh Bailey... Uh, is a bit of a unique example here. Now, he's making 3.3 .3 right now. He's 28 years old, so you could say in a way he's a little bit of a late bloomer. Now, Josh Bailey's been out the Islanders a long time. He's been there since 2008. 
He's always been a pretty decent player, but he's never been a top line, you know, top scoring kind of guy like he has been this season. Now, obviously, there's still a lot of games left to be played, and a lot of things can happen uh, between now and the end of the year. But right now, uh, if you take a look at uh, Josh Bailey's numbers, he's on pace for over 100 points. Uh, you know, this is substantially higher than his career high. Right now, he's on pace to score 24 goals and average around 82 assists. Now, that's probably going to tail off a bit. You know, maybe he will keep up to the pace, but let's just say for argument's sake, he, he doesn't. And even if he ends up being even 85 to 90 points, that's still substantially higher. I mean, if he scores 24 goals, his previous high was 16. And that was back in 2009-10 season, so that was a long time ago. Now, if he ends up, uh, he's on pace for 82 assists, even if he ends up with, I don't know, even 65-70, uh, even that's still a substantially higher number. I mean, his career high previously was 43. I mean, so... Obviously, you know, he, we could classify him as a late bloomer, and the fact that he's getting to play with Tavares more often and more frequently certainly has played a role here. Um, you know, could Bailey be another example of like a Matt Molson? We've seen other players play with a guy like Tavares, do exceptionally well, get the big contract but have to leave to get it, and then it all falls apart. So really, in my opinion, I think Josh Bailey would be smart to not get too greedy here. Uh, I hope that his team and the agent um, can probably work something out. Now, obviously, does he deserve a raise? Absolutely. He's play, Even last season was a, was a step up over his previous years. I believe he finished with 56 points. So, I mean, that was still a big jump forward, too. So, he's been progressing. But at his age, a lot of um, scoring NHL forwards tend to peak their potential anywhere between uh, 26 to 28, 29 years old. He's already on the, the far end of that. So the odds of him continuing to go up, probably slim. Now, if he stays with the Islanders and he stays playing with Tavares and he keep going with they get, what they have going right now, he might have a much better shot at maintaining that. Now, I hope him and his agent realize that. I just don't see Josh Bailey getting a massive contract somewhere else and continuing up with the production. Not to say that the contract wouldn't come. There's a lot of teams who get really silly on uh, July 1 and offer out all this big money for one fantastic season. We've seen it happen way too too often, like David Clarkson, prime example. So really at the end of the day, I think there's a pretty good chance that the Islanders are going to be able to re-sign these guys. The only thing is they need Bailey to be reasonable here. If he ends up finishing anywhere near what he's on pace for right now, as much as that's a phenomenal year for him, they can't expect this massive payday for one season when every other season was, you know, half of that production. That just doesn't make sense, you know. So, at the end of the day, I think it is possible. But if they, I think uh, for for Bailey, it's hard to say what a reasonable number is. I think it's going to have to be at least six million. I mean, six to seven million. I think is probably reasonable. I mean, based on the cap going up, and if you look at other um, forwards that are kind of like not your top top stars, but like your middle of the road. You know, maybe a top 20, 25 score. Like, you know, they're going to be making uh, that and, and more. You know, so I think, uh, you know, they're going to end up probably paying Bailey. Uh, maybe $7 million might be a fair number. I don't know. I mean, tell me what you think. What do you think Josh Bailey is going to fetch as a UFA? I mean, obviously, there's a probably a pretty good chance he's going to end up making a little bit more if he leaves the island. Uh, just because there's going to be some foolish teams throwing money at him. But I think the smart money is for him to stay. That's me. But what do you think Bailey's going to make? I don't think there's as much of an argument over Tavares. I mean, obviously, I think there might be some different opinions out there. So let me know in the comments about Tavares as well. But I think most people will probably agree that it's going to be at least 11 to 12 million, maybe a little bit more, just because the cap's going up. So do they really want to have, you know, 18, 19 million dollars tied up in two guys? You know, they are really strong players. And if you look at, they got Jordan Eberle at 6 million. They got Matthew Barzell still on his rookie contract. You know, they've got uh, Clutterbuck signed for a few years. They've got Andrew Ladd for quite a number of years yet. You know, that it might be a little bit much. So they're going to need Bailey to be reasonable here in order to maintain both. But if they were smart, uh, not only the team, but Bailey and Tavares both, they've got a good thing going. Uh, I think John Tavares can play with just about anybody and make them look good. Josh Bailey, on the other hand, maybe not. So. We'll see what happens, but uh, I think there's a good possibility. The only way they're going to be able to do it, though, 
is they're going to probably have to fill in the empty spots on, on the cheaper end of things. So they either do that internally by giving guys like Josh Hosang, Shane Prince, um, you know, just to name a couple of other guys, uh, Beauvillier. Uh, they have a lot of good prospects and younger guys that could probably fill in for, you know, anywhere is 800000 or a million dollars, 1.2, whatever. Like they're going to have to have some cheaper contracts mixed in between, because uh, if you look at their, their top forwards, like if they end up locking up Bailey and Tavares and they've already got, like I said, Andrew Land, Clutterbuck, uh, Eberle, um, you know, Anders Lee, they've got a lot of money already tied up. So they can't get themselves in a really unfriendly cap situation, but it's it's tough nowadays. As the cap goes up, players want their money, and you gotta do what you gotta do to try to keep your team together, especially when things aren't too bad, and the Islanders aren't doing that badly. So on the arena front, one thing that I thought was quite uh, interesting today was that uh, John Tavares was interviewed uh, earlier today after the announcement was made official, and he was asked whether or not this arena deal is going to uh, influence his decision of whether or not he's going to re-sign him to New York Islanders or not. Most people felt that it was a foregone conclusion that if they didn't have an arena deal in place by the end of the season and there was too many question marks, then that might influence him to pack up and go because of the instability of the franchise. And that would make a lot of sense. It's not a crazy thought for people to think that. But the one thing that surprised me was he said that it wasn't really a factor. That kind of took me off guard. So that means one of two things. Either he had enough confidence in his franchise, more than we thought he did, to kind of ride this out that it was going to come together, or maybe he has intentions of possibly heading out and it really is not going to matter either way. You could, you could make that, twist that in, in either the Islander's favor or against them, I think, because it's one of those comments you can make it go either way. Um, you know, I've said myself many times that the Islanders' arena deal is probably going to play a big role in his decision. I would think any top player who wants to win and wants to get paid big money is going to want to do so with a franchise that's in an excellent position to do that, to win and to be stable. I mean, who, who wants not to be, right? So let me know in the comments what do you think. What are the magic numbers for John Tavares and what is the magic numbers for Josh Bailey? Personally, like I said, I can see Tavares being 12 to 12.5 and I can see, I think Bailey somewhere around 7 is reasonable. But is it smart for them to have that much money tied up and those two guys, considering the other forwards, they've got signed for pretty decent money long term? You let me know in the comments and we'll catch you in the next video.